Well, in today's episode, we're down here at Allsford, where they're currently shunted together the steam illumination sets. Another part of the railway you just don't get to see. They've got to make two sets together, and I have been told they have a cunning plan of how they're going to do it. Welcome to In The Loop. Well, there goes the end of my career. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Watercrest Line. Now, we're down here at Allsford, where they're currently shunting the sets together and essentially chopping and changing, getting ready for steam illuminations, which, by the time you've seen this, will have already started. Visit watercrestline.co.uk to book tickets. Definitely worth a visit. Now, before we go any further, it's time for a quick far look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Well, last week saw the launch of Steam Illuminations 2023, a fantastic evening tying in with a lantern parade from a local school at Perrins up the high street with a couple of hundred attendees and some wonderful lanterns and another couple of hundred just coming out to watch. It was a fantastic evening, live music, food and yeah, a fantastic way to kick off the Steam Illumination season. Of course, tickets are still available. Visit watercrestline.co.uk for more information. Now, a few people have been asking how Lion, our Class 50, is getting on. Well, the generators are still away at the works. They're pretty much done. They've been paid for and they'll be bringing them back with a view to reinstall them into the locomotive at the start of next year. And if you would like to help support them further, then the link is in the description below. In the meantime, as we've seen, while the main generator is out, the volunteers here have been doing lots of work without the uh, generator inconveniently being in the way, including painting and working on the engine room itself and also doing some weld repairs on the roof. So hopefully it won't be too long before we hear the lion roar once again. <laughs> Further up in the yard, the Eastley Railway Preservation Society are working on their locomotive 8 to 8 and getting it ready for the winter. Understandably, the cold and harsh conditions isn't that good for metal work. So they're essentially protecting the meshwork and making sure there's no water in there as well, which could freeze and damage pipe work and with anything else to do with a locomotive. This will leave them in a better state for when they do take everything apart. Now here in the boiler shop, we have Canadian Civic's boiler. As you can see, the tubes are in there currently being expanded in place to make that lovely steam and watertight seal essential for boilers. Further down, all the stays are now in. They're currently being tooled in place and work is progressing really well. As I said to uh, quite a few people have asked, it does sound like only a few jobs, but when you have to do them hundreds, if not thousands of times, it suddenly adds up. Looking at the standard four boiler for 75079, they've been currently doing some work on the door plate patch here. Now, uh, the boiler at the moment is upside down. So this is your high point for corrosion because all the sediment, like in your kettle, settles at the bottom and just wears away. They've got a new plate on here, which is currently tacked in place and it's going to be welded onto this plate here and then riveted onto the foundation ring. Now from the boiler shop to outside where we have our little blue engines boiler which has just been steam tested out of frames. The next stage will be once it's ready to go it will go in the frames for its full boiler exam and hopefully it won't be too long before we hear this little engine go peep peep once again. Now over here in the carriage works with our approach as you can see the roof supports are up. It's all been lifted up, sealed to make it watertight and these are going to stay here for extra supports. The next stage with the roof is they'll be putting on the roof boards over the top once the scaffolding arrives so they don't have to do any high wire work. The guys here are currently installing the pipe. Now through here is where the communication cord goes. Um, normally what would happen is you'd have the ends off and just thread it straight through. However, it's a lot of work just to take the ends off to put a little bit of pipe in, so they're doing a bit more of a uh, manual method. Over here in Ropley MPD, we start with Goliath. Now this was due to be hauling some steam illuminations trains, but unfortunately we'll no longer be doing so. It failed a routine inspection, so while we undertake the work, it understandably can't haul any trains. To cover this, thanks to you to our friends at the Swanage Railway and Southern Locomotives, Manston will be visiting and hauling trains. So definitely something to look forward to. Looking at the bottom end of 75079, our standard four, as you can see, the axle boxes have been machined and are currently being fitted in place. Um, this is a somewhat long-winded process of essentially blowing up the axle, putting the axle box on top of it, rolling it around, and then taking it off, scraping it until you get the perfect fit. Uh, a lot of fettling, let's say. Now, at the back, we have our tender for the standard four. Um, currently, there's some plate work being fitted. The brake rigging is complete. Just forward of that is our little blue tank engine. Now, Jose is currently on the bunker, sanding down 
getting ready for another paint. So, on the line of our little tank engine, let's quickly pop next door. Well, considering the last time we were in here, the tanks, splashes, steps and cladding, they were all covered in just undercoat and primer, these do look rather splendid, almost ready to be mounted, once the paint dries, that is. So yes, another step forward for getting our little blue tank engine back once again. Now at the far end, the ferry van has come along quite nicely, taking quite a transformation from the last time we saw it, where they were doing lots of patchwork, they've given it a lovely coat of paint, so on the inside it is now watertight, which is the crucial bit. As a reminder, the seats currently for the bullied coach, which is currently in the carriage works, are inside here, and that's where they get stored, and also re-upholstered, maintained. And once the carriage shop have completed their work on the shell and roof of the coach, they can buffer this up, open the doors, offload everything back inside, reinstall the seats and have it ready to go. Well, as they say, remember, remember the 5th of November and today is a memorable reason for, aside from the obvious, we're here in Medstead Signal Box and this is the last day, aside from the running service, this is the last day that this box is going to be as you see it. By the time you see this, this has been uh, disconnected and will be in the new panel, but what you can see now is one of the last trains going through under the lever frame box. Now, as a reminder, this has been taken out because we need to do some heavy maintenance on the uh, interlocking, the levers themselves, and you really can't do that with trains running. So the panel is in as a temporary installation to keep that running. Now, further down, um, the um, S&T commissioning team are currently doing some work. So instead of being mechanically operated points, they are going to be motorised. From you as a passenger, you really aren't actually going to see any difference at all, but it is going to increase the flexibility of this signal box. We're also going to add a detection system, so the signalman can see where the train is going along the track rather than having to uh, look out the window, and essentially take it up a level as well. So it really is going to be, it's going to be a shame to see this go, but equally, it'll be interesting to have a slightly new system in play. Now that was perfect timing. <laughs> And finally, on the 4th of November, we saw our last day of a 7F running in service. A really well attended day, it was great to see so many people out, and it was good to get one last hurrah. Of course, the day of filming, it's about to do the real L train in the evening, so to be honest, I can't think of a better way to send off. From my perspective as a fireman, it's been an absolutely fantastic engine, I know lots of people have enjoyed it as well. So hopefully it won't be too long before we see the 7F running once again. Well, a lot's happening here at the Watercrest Line. Now, by the time you watch this, we'll already have started steam illuminations. Tickets available at watercrestline.co.uk, definitely worth a ride. But today, here is some of the prep work, which you guys never see. We're currently shunting around, forming up the sets, ready to run. So, to find out a little bit more, let's chat to one of the shunters. Hi there, my name's Liam. Uh, I'm one of the shunters in the operations department. Today we're shunting some of the coaches about in preparation for steam illuminations. So uh, it's a little bit unusual. Typically we'd be doing this uh, midweek, uh, so with the staff, uh, paid staff and the mixture of paid staff and volunteers. Uh, but today, as we're running one train service, we're managing to uh, do it around a service, which is the, uh, the eye of it just coming down behind us now. So we're moving coaches around um, to make sure that they're in the right order for the two sets that we will uh, be running for steam illuminations. We're, um, we're quite confined with space here at the Watercrest line, uh, so there's not a whole lot of space in our sidings or around our stations uh, in order to uh, do all the shunts that we'd like to do. Uh, so we've got to do a lot of you know, to and fro and backwards and forwards, uh, working our way around the, uh, around the service train. Uh, so today you've got myself working, um, today I'm driving the 08, uh, we've also got uh, George shunting, so say he's going in between the coaches, cut through line, cut in, and then we've also got Phil in the signal box, who's uh, I say today's the duty signalman uh, here at Alford, so working with the service train and with uh, what we need to do from a shunting perspective. 
Um, so with shunting, it's one of the most dangerous jobs that we do uh, here at the watercraft line. Um, so really important to bear safety in mind at all points. Every time we put someone between our set of vehicles, uh, we need to make sure absolutely we're absolutely certain that it's uh, safe to do so. Um, so I so say all of the team have had a, I say a good amount of training uh, and a good amount of experience to get to the, the point we are today. Uh, hello, so I'm George, uh, I'm the operations assistant and uh, today I'm the man on the ground uh, while Liam's doing all the driving. Um, so at the moment we're just going through platform two, uh, so Liam's in total control of, uh, of the train. We're trying to put all the sets together for illuminations today. Basically it will uh, free up the ops manager for getting on with doing uh, all the other bits, the thousand and one jobs that he has to do. Um, so he's entrusted us to come down today to, uh, to sort all the sets out. Um, the plan at the moment is we're currently taking this coach over to the cattle dock. Uh, this is the bullied coach 1456 which is going away to um, another railway. So we're getting that all queued up ready for tomorrow. My job today is basically to put all the coaches together. So while Liam's driving, that's doing the vac pipes, splitting the coaches, putting them together. It's a real teamwork for stuff like this because we have delays with the signal box. We're working around a one train service today as well. So we have to make sure we don't delay the, uh, the service train. So a lot of the stuff we do is actually when the railway is closed usually, um, so it's after the, uh, after the service has finished or just before the service has begun. So it's not often seen as to what we do. Um, it looks like uh, on the occasions that we are seen that it looks like we're just playing trains. It's actually quite a difficult job to make sure all the sets are where they need to be and in the formations. Um, so all the coaches here, um, they might look the same, um, all being green, but actually they're all very different. Um, this one for example is a, a bullied open. Um, so we've got 64 seat capacity in here and um, there's no other special features such as a buffet or anything. So if we wanted to put this in the dining set, um, it's totally pointless because it's not the right coach for the job. We've got several special coaches on the railway, um, one of which is the kitchen car 1973, which has just been um, restored by the guys in the workshop. That now forms all of our um, bell dining and our countryman dining. Um, it's all um, fitted out with a kitchen and a bar inside. Um, if we don't have that coach in the bell set, you won't have a kitchen. So we're getting this coach together to be taken for the lorry um, tomorrow. Um, to do that, they need to put a winch on the hook. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the coach as if we were going to put a locomotive on. Um, so the first thing we have to do is drop the buckeye, um, which are extremely heavy things, and you don't want to get your fingers in the way when you're doing it. So that just drops down like that. So the hook's now exposed underneath the coach. And then what we do is we pull the buffers out and put the saddles on top, just like this. That's that one. There we go, so now we've got both buffers out. We've got the buckeye dropped with the hook exposed and we've got a, um, a pin in the door and that'll stop anybody who would be in a coach normally being able to open the doors from the inside. So there we are, essentially train Tetris, just one of the many parts of the railway you guys don't get to see. And remember, all of this happened for Steam Illumination, so do book your tickets, visit watercrossline.co.uk for more information. That's it from us this week, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you to Liam and George for chatting to us, and we'll see you next time.